Are you having a hard time finding the right track for your diecast racing needs? Are you tired of your track being too bumpy? Is your track tired of being raced on? Stop it, Dad! If you've ever felt this way, you've come to the right place. Introducing the all-new SR1 3D printable 164 scale diecast racing track that you can print yourself. Hey! The SR1 diecast racing track is good for all sorts of tasks, like holding your keys, making cool shapes on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, washing your hair, or even telling that special someone that you love them. But that's not all. It even works great with Hot Wheels cars. Stay tuned to learn more about how you can get your own STL files so you can print your own Spoolheads Racing SR1 track. Race on, friends. No axles were bent in the making of this video. The response to the Build Journal 2 video that I made where I talked about 3D printing has been really great and it just goes to show how great the diecast community really is. Thanks to all of you who watched it and who subscribed to the channel. It's a great start and it really gets me excited for what's to come. In this video I'm really excited to announce the public release of the STL files for the Spoolheads Racing SR1 track. This release is focused on dual lane track. It starts with two different sizes of straight track, one for a smaller print bed, a dual lane 45 degree turn that can be expanded into a 90 degree or 180 degree turn by adding more pieces, two different track pieces that incorporate a five degree angle for coming in and out of flat areas, and the piece that I might be most excited about is the SR1 dual lane track spacer. I also have plans to continue to grow the SR1 track series lineup with bank turns, turns with bigger radiuses, and single lane track as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date with the SR1 track series. Let me start with a brief history of where the SR1 track series came from. When I first started getting into diecast racing, I printed a lot of things that I found on Thingiverse. I found one turn from a user that I really liked named Molly Matias. The concept of the turn worked really well for what I wanted, but I needed a turn that fit with a crash racer set. Models that you find on Thingiverse have different licenses many of which allow you to modify the model as long as you attribute who it came from. So I had to rebuild the track from the ground up in Fusion 360. Once I built a new track from the ground up that worked for me, I needed a name for it. I first started calling it SH1 for Spoolheads 1, but then I wrote it out and it says SH1 track. I quickly decided to go with another name. So I'm just gonna pretend that Spoolheads is one word and call it the SR1 track. Here's the part that I'm really excited about. I'm posting all of the STL files for the SR1 track to Thingiverse for you to be able to print on your own. Just search for Spoolheads Racing or SR1 track and it'll come up. The license for the SR1 track is Creative Commons Attribution, so feel free to modify or share the track. The only thing that's required is that you attribute Spoolheads to the original work. I've also started a 164 scale diecast racing group on Thingiverse to help everyone collect track pieces that they find useful for diecast racing. There's a lot of advantages to 3D printing your own track. One is that the surface is a lot harder and more firm, which gives a really nice consistent ride. It's also nice that you still get a good view of the cars. Some 3D printed track like this one, um, once you get in there, it's designed for high speed, but you, can, you can't even see the car anymore. So it's finding a balance between having high sidewalls and still be able to feature the cars during a race. And the track just looks nice. All right, the main part of the track is the straight pieces. And the straight pieces come in two different sizes. They are the 10 inch and the seven and a half inch, just depending on your build plate. If you've got like a Creality Ender 3, which is a super popular printer, this fits on it. If you have something bigger, it's nice to be able to print those bigger sizes right there. These connect just right directly to the Crash Racer set. Gives a really nice smooth transition right there. Also, I've added a SR1 track spacer there. Connect those directly to the Hot Wheels track and give a really nice smooth transition there as well. These are spacers that you can print, but you can also use just Hot Wheels track pieces. Or else you can just use those to go between two SR1 track pieces. But I really like having the SR1 track spacer there. It gives a lot of rigidity to it. You can stack multiple pieces together. So I can just hold it out right there and that's all supported right there because of how well this is designed. Then there's the turn. These are just 45 degree pieces. So you put two of them together and you have 90 degrees. And if you put four of them together, 
You have 180 degrees. The diameter of the inside part of the turn is just over 16 inches. Again, just be aware that this is not for high speeds, but it is pretty good, especially for low profile cars. It rarely do low profile cars have a problem on this. Let's talk about the five degree incline pieces and decline. I found that the slope of the track works really well when it's declining about an inch every foot. So I designed these to be able to accomplish that. Because of the curve in these, you have to use these track connectors. And you can just plug it in and that will get you about the slope that you need coming in and out of that. And then this one does the same, but it just is coming out. If I bring in my little CD case stack right here, you can see how that, how that comes in and out of that. Next, I wanna show why I'm so excited about the track spacers. All right, so with the track spacer, I can just take two little screws just screw these in. And then you can just slide the crash racers just right on. And that mounts really well. This also works with Hot Wheels track. Just slide that right through. Keeps it nice and straight, exactly how you want it to go. And just gives you some good flexibility there. With the crash racer set, it's not it's not the flattest thing in the world. It has a bend to it, but by just adding three or four of these SR1 track spacers, but just by adding that, it ends up making it really nice and flat all the way down. So regardless of what you're using, the SR1 track spacers is gonna be a big help to you. My hope is that with your help, the SR1 track will continue to develop and help grow the diecast racing community. Again, I have several more SR1 track pieces that I'll announce on YouTube, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you have any questions about the SR1 track series that I haven't covered, please leave a comment below. Thanks again to all of the diecast racing community and race on friends.